Oh, this is Halo 5 Tutor with another Halo 5 multiplayer gameplay commentary. As always, I'm bringing you the tips and tricks that you need to step up your game and take it to the next level. I'll help you win more often and have more fun while you're doing it. Now, Warzone is a very popular variant in Halo 5, so I wanted to show you a Warzone gameplay. Now, unfortunately, when I jump into the theater, it doesn't bring me straight to my own gamer tag. It makes me cycle through all these different Spartans, so that's why you see me searching frantically to find my own Spartan. So here I am. They've dumped us in the base, and the first thing you need to do in Warzone is clear out your, your own team's base. Usually there's just a few enemies, not anything too difficult in this case a few Prometheans so you clear them out and then you want to capture the base now in your base there's a core which you need to defend which is right behind me here and in front this is a requisition terminal where you can pick up weapons vehicles or other things unfortunately in the theater mode you can't see me making the selection uh, it's hidden in the theater but in game it pulls up a panel where you can choose from all the different different weapons that are available and uh, early on in the game, you don't really have access to a lot, but as the game progresses, you get access to more and more powerful things, leading up to like, scorpions and wraiths and banshees and sniper rifles and you know all kinds of great stuff. So here I am in the armory, which is just a little bit further out. The base is kind of on the edge of the map. The armory is a little further, and then in the center of the map is the fortress. Now the fortress is the, the real critical area of the game because that's where most of the action is going to take place in between the two teams. So the team that occupies the, the mo most uh, buildings at the same time is the team that's going to accrue more points. The first team to 1,000 points wins. Now I want to emphasize, and this is really important, if I don't teach you anything else in this video, I want to teach you this. It's super, super important to be the first team to capture the fortress when you're playing in Warzone. Because it's very, well, I'm not going to say it's easy to capture the fortress, but it's much, much easier to capture it initially than to recapture it from your opponents. Once your opponents are locked in there, it's very, very difficult to get it back. The reason being is in order to clear it out and to recapture it, you need to kill all the enemies that are inside the building and you need to sit on it for a period of time while it captures. That's very, very difficult to do because it's a very large building. So to get all throughout the building and find and hunt down every enemy that's in every nook and cranny and kill them all, uh, meanwhile, more forces continue to pour in. It's very difficult to do. So it is super important that you're the first team to capture the fortress. Now, if you, if, 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 you, if you don't capture the fortress, there's still some of these side missions that you can participate in. And it, you know, you can, it doesn't matter if you capture the fortress or not, you can still participate in these side missions, but especially if you have not captured the fortress, this is a good idea. This is a, an a excellent alternative for scoring points. So in this case, I'm over here in this area hunting these, this elite and a couple of grunts. Uh, the the opponents start out pretty easy early on you know I could handle this this little cluster on my own without too much difficulty later on they get much much more powerful much more difficult to handle they have bigger weapons they have better armor they kind of come in larger groups sometimes they have vehicles so as the game progresses it gets more and more difficult but the great thing is is if your team is not scoring enough points by occupying the different buildings on the map you can go out and complete these side missions and score a lot of points that way and that's a great way to either catch up if you've fallen behind or really seal the victory if you're ahead so that's something that i really focused on throughout this game especially because my team didn't really have a very good hold on the fortress and so i felt like i could either continue to lose my life over and over and over again by trying to rush the fortress or i could go out and complete some side missions and actually still score some points so that's what i spent a lot of my time doing if your team has captured the fortress, it's generally a good idea to keep a, a, a strong number of, of teammates in there, kind of keep it as a stronghold, and maybe send a few out on alternative missions. Maybe uh, if your teammates die and they respawn outside of the fortress, they can go and complete some of those side missions. But generally speaking, you want to have a pretty solid group inside the fortress holding it down if you've already captured it, because that can be a huge, huge advantage. Now. Another thing that's new to the 
the Warzone game type is these wrecks, REQs, requisitions. And basically there are different weapons or vehicles or power-ups that you have access to throughout the game. Now you obtain these, it's a little complicated, you obtain these um, like in between the game. You open up packs that give you access to these requisitions. So you can like for example get like open packs that that have sniper rifles and mongooses and rocket launchers and then next time you go in and actually play in warzone you have access to that inventory so in the warzone game everybody has a completely different inventory based on which requisitions they got in between games so in between games you can go and open more packs and a, a, a kind of build up your inventory and then when you actually go play in the game you use it up and it's kind of like this cycle. Now, in order to get additional requisitions, you either have to pay real money to get them, or there's kind of an in-game currency. You get extra, you get extra like credits in the game just for playing, and that gives you access to a lot of requisitions. In my opinion, you earn as many free requ requisitions as you're ever gonna need. So I really would say, unless you you just have money to burn, I wouldn't really spend money on the requisitions. But that is an option if that's something you want to do. Now I'm going to make a, a future video that shows you a little bit more about the, the in-between game process of opening the requisitions, purchasing requisitions, and how all that works. Because I know it can be kind of convoluted if I'm not showing it here in the video. So I'm not going to get too in-depth in that until I can actually show you in a future video. But in this case, for example, I chose to load out with Level this goat. I chose that because it's a large map. It, I can get around quickly and hopefully get out and maybe complete some side quests or splatter a couple of opponents. So I could have maybe chosen between this and a mongoose and a warthog and a sniper rifle. And so I, I kind of had a few different choices which I can choose from. So nice I will point out a, a thousand points will win the game, but there is an alternative way to win which is to, to destroy your opponent's core which is in their base. And of course, if your opponents destroy your core, you're going to lose. The, real, the, the trouble is, though, you can't gain access to their core unless you capture all the buildings. So if you capture the fortress, and then you go capture their armory, then you have access to their base and you can capture the core. The, the truth is, is if you're behind on the scorecard, that means you probably are not controlling the map, you're not controlling all those buildings. So if you're already behind by not controlling the buildings, not controlling the map, it's going to be very unlikely that you're going to be able to push through, capture all those, and destroy your opponent's core in their base. I mean, I'm not to say it's impossible, but if you're already behind on the score, then it's probably not likely that you're going to be in a position to destroy their core, which is, you know, you have to go through all the progressions. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, the poll question that I wanted to throw out to everybody today is I wanted you to list uh, the different Halo games and which ones were your favorite, uh, your most favorite to least favorite, right? So I'm gonna start with mine, and I really would have to say, and again, it's a small sample size, but I would say Halo 5 is my most favorite Halo game that we've I've played. I really like Halo 5 a lot. Probably next up, I would go with uh, Halo 3, and or ODST, I know, I mean, the multiplayer was the same, which is the, the bulk of what I play, so Halo 3 and ODST kind of together. I actually really liked both the campaigns on Halo 3 and ODST a lot. I played them really extensively, and the firefight in ODST, I really enjoyed. Um, I'll go with Reach next, and then Halo, let's see, Halo 4, last. <laughs> So those are all the games I played. I also played the Halo 1 Anniversary Edition. I won't really count that. Um, but so Halo 5, Halo 3, ODST, uh, Halo Reach, then Halo 4. So that's my order. So down in the comment section below, let me know what your order is. Which games did you like the most to least? And maybe what were some of your favorite game types or different playlists that you had available in those? Then what, what made it your favorite, I guess? Um, let's see, the next thing I want to get into really quickly is just telling you a little bit more about me. A lot of you have been subscribed for a long time, and I get all kinds of questions about where I've been and what I've been up to and how I'm doing, and uh, I, I feel I feel honored that all that there's so many people out there that even care. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I will say that 
a couple years ago, right after I stopped making videos, my wife and I separated. And I'll, I won't get into too many details, but I will just say that it was a very, very positive thing to happen to me. Um, it was not a healthy relationship. It was not a good situation for me. And so the separation was very, very positive for me. Um, and I would just, I would just advocate if I can just take one minute to say, if you have any relationships in your life that are unhealthy, that are destructive, that are, that are not improving the quality of your life, uh, and heaven forbid are abusive in any way, you know, you, you're, you're, Anybody listening to the sound of my voice does not have to deal with that situation. I, I mean, they don't have to stay in that situation. I mean, it is something that you can get help with. No, whatever is going on, you don't need to accept being in an unhealthy relationship. Uh, I, I was in one myself. It was a really dark place. It was a really dark time. And I'm just here to tell you that things can improve. And I know that my situation is unique. I'm sure everyone else's situation is unique. And I know a lot of you have, have a lot of great healthy relationships and it's not a problem. Whether it's family members, spouses, girlfriends, regular friends, maybe somebody at school or work. All I'm trying to say is not all relationships are healthy. And if they're unhealthy relationships, there's something you can do about it. You don't have to feel trapped. There's people you can go to, there's people you can talk to, there's help you can get, there's alternatives to life, because life is just too short to get stuck in a really bad situation with somebody who doesn't make you a better person. So that's all I'm going to really say about that. Now, I will point out, in the past I've done things like open game nights, I've done live commentaries, I've done, I've done a lot of different things, and I want to continue to do all those, which I'm kind of gearing up towards them. It's kind of one day at a time here. The game just came out, so I'm still getting back into the flow of things. But one of the things I want to do very soon is an open game night, which is where you can come and play with me and my friends. We have a great time. I might be able to live stream that gameplay so that you can be on YouTube, which would be a great opportunity for you if you want to see yourself online. So keep your eye out. Make sure you've subscribed and you're checking back to my channel every day so that you'll get the notification when those live gameplays, those open game nights will come up because those will be really cool events. Also, I'm hoping to partner up with a few other people so I can share some of their gameplays. Certainly, I'm not a pro player. My, my style isn't very flashy, and so I might be using some other people's gameplays uh, in the near future. So if you have any really excellent games, make sure you save those. Um, I'm not sure I'm not going to ask for them yet, but if you have any really incredible clips, highlights, gameplays, make sure that you save them in your theater so that you can go back and, and share them later on if I'm ever, you know, if it ever meets the criteria of what I'm asking for. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Well, here I am. I've loaded out with the Wraith. Uh, we're getting towards the end of the game. Unfortunately, my team is hopelessly behind, but uh, I was able to contribute quite a bit throughout the gameplay by completing some side missions, by trying to push into the enemy fortress as best as I could. Here I'm going to kind of go on a suicide mission and destroy the opponent's scorpion, which I'm able to successfully destroy their scor scorpion, uh, but the game's over and it's too late. So I want to thank you all for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, uh, share your ideas, answer the poll question. Uh, I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Halo 5 Tutor signing out. I'll see you next time.